Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the beautiful Swabian Hills. This has to be one of the best days of 2015 because that's the new 991 GT3 RS and we're going to go and drive it. So come on, jump in. Let's go and see what it's like. Four litres, 500 horsepower and a lot of wing. It's orange and it's got this where the gear lever should be. Um, the way this is going to work is we're quite hurried as usual. We're going to go on the road. I'm going to drive it and see what it's like to drive on the street. And then I think we might go to a circuit and try it there. But for now, just look at that wing and look at those scoops. Yes, I'm still slightly obsessing over that rear wing, but before we begin this rather brilliant day, let's think about some numbers. Um, the GT3 RS obviously is a step on from the GT3. We have a four litre flat six in this one with 500 horsepower, 339 foot-pounds of torque. That is, respectively, 25 horsepower and 15 foot-pounds more than the standard GT3, but this is quite a different car. As you can probably see, it's the wider body from the turbo, so it's got that kind of hunkered down look. Massive 21 inch rear rims, 20 inch front rims. And even though it's got the wider body, it's actually 10 kilograms lighter than a GT3 because it's got a magnesium roof and a carbon fiber bonnet, carbon fiber front wings, carbon fiber rear deck lid and carbon fiber rear wing. Yes, that rear wing. Have you seen the rear wing? Have you seen the rear wing on this car? The motor is the centerpiece here. Now four litres and with a new crank and intake system. It revs a little lower than the 3.8, but 8,800 RPM is still mighty impressive. The intake system with the side inlets is now much more effective. The exhaust box is made from titanium. Porsche claims 0 to 100 miles an hour in 7.1 seconds, which in an atmospheric 911 is completely nuts. The transmission is the same dual clutch as found in the GT3, but with several small improvements and slightly shorter paddle clicks. There is no manual option. The chassis is a big step over even the GT3. Track widths are up front and rear, and the rubber is enormous. 265 section at the front and 325 at the rear on a 21 inch rim. The rear tire is carried over unchanged from the 918. As with all RS models, there are split lower arms for increased suspension adjustment and three way adjustable roll bars. There are two damper settings and the car uses helper springs, which is quite rare for an RS. The rear steering system is carried over from the GT3. 410mm and 390mm ceramics are an option, smaller steels are standard. The rear locking differential is completely variable and can work up to 100% lock and is fully torque vectoring. And those wings, well they look amazing but they make this a very sticky piggy. The front wing vents and splitter add 30% more downforce than the old 997 and the rear wing brings big improvements out back. I'm not going to quote the Porsche downforce numbers, but in my experience, wings that big with that angle of attack make a big difference. The interior is pretty normal 911. Some RS logos here and there, the option of Sport Chrono and a special lap timing and data app. There are several seat options. These are the folding buckets but the fixed back carbon jobbies are the ones to have. As ever, the club sport package with cage and extinguisher is a no cost option. And one last point, the recess in the bonnet that then runs over the roof line helps make this, to my eyes, a really, really good looking car. Right, let's go and do some driving. Okay, I've got my exhaust button on, I'm in the manual gearbox, and there's third gear. Okay? Are you getting that? Wow. Okay. First impressions, it does feel wider on the road than the GT3, so I'm being a bit more careful about the way I place the car. Immediately, more front axle grip. Even on the road, you notice it compared to the normal GT3. It's a 265 section front tyre. That's massive. That's the same width as a Boxster's rear tyre was when they launched it. 
smaller steering wheel makes it feel even more agile, but the grip levels on the road are just supreme. The engine, the engine, interesting, a lot more mid-range. It feels punchier lower down with that capacity. Unlike the GT3, which revs to nine, this is now back at about 8.8 8 at the limiter. Is that because the standard G3's engine was letting go? I don't know. Is that a safety thing or do they just not need to go that far? I haven't an answer for that. Um, gearbox, well, okay, the can of worms. It's a PDK, I'd prefer a manual, but as these dual clutches go, it feels even faster and more responsive than it does in the GT3. I mean, the shifts, get this. I mean, it, it's crazy. It's so fast. Yes, as a road car, this is most interesting. I'm keeping the dampers in the soft mode. German roads are so smooth, it's very difficult, really, to make a comparison between here and the UK or anywhere else with normal roads. You can even drive it with the firm dampers in Germany. It doesn't feel too bad, but you couldn't do that in the UK. Is this car a track car? Yes, it is. Is it completely usable on the road? Absolutely. I mean, I'm sitting here in my folding bucket seat. This doesn't have the 918 bucket seat, this particular car. And I've got my sat nav, I've got my air conditioning. I mean, it, it, it's really just as usable as the 991 GTS that I use on a daily basis. This one doesn't have a front axle lift. I'd want that if I was going to use it on a daily basis. You've got an exhaust button that makes it loud or quiet. You've got this pit speed button. We can play with that later on. Um, you can turn all the traction and stability off. And you have this PDK sport mode as well, which I think bit of nonsense really because it makes the shift a bit sort of a bit for me it's when the computer pretends it can't drive properly that's a road car how is that allowed there's no doubt it's a sensational fast road car it's grippy it's accurate it's rewarding but it is quite easy at times and it just goes you in that engine flipping hell and at that point you do find yourself sort of thinking well yeah you know what at that point that's when you say i'm gonna go to a circuit I'm gonna go to a The run back to the track sadly involves some de-restricted autobahn, which means running very, very fast. Over 180 miles an hour, you can feel the drag from those wings. So that's just your regular side, isn't it? Here we are, Bysak, the Holy Grail. You don't get to come here very often. They've given us some time to play around with this amazing new car. But I've come here in Mr. Orange and I've enjoyed Mr. Orange and I feel loyal to him. However, there's Mr. Purple. And you know what? I need Mr. Purple. told me when I was about 16, 17 that I'd get to drive the latest, greatest, lightweight Porsche around Porsche's test track, I would have said you're lying. So excuse me while I'm just a little bit grinny about the whole thing. So here we have the GT3 RS. I've got the loud exhaust on, everything else I've got in normal. I've got the suspension soft. I've not got PDK Sport on. This is a wicked little circuit. Not a racetrack, a proving circuit, but wow, is it technical. First impressions, well, grip, the grip this thing generates is outrageous. I'm on the, the optional Dunlop, I say optional, you can have this or a, or a Michelin, and it is outrageous how much grip this thing generates. And the way it turns, the front axle, like all 991s, turns miles better than the 997, and then you just get on the gas and it goes. Wow. And then the motor takes over. 
and it strolls on a bit. What's this doing now? Two, 20, 230 odd, a bit more. Braking hard for turn one. Wow, fantastic brakes and great brake feel. And this is what I love about these cars. It has inherent balance. Everyone thinks the rear engine thing doesn't work, but it does. Braking hard, let's complete this lap. Traction is just mega. And you get that lovely little slippy feeling on the exit too. How does it feel compared to a standard GT3? It's a good question. Motor's got more mid-range, really thumps you out, definitely has more traction. I have to say, I think the steering feels a little bit nicer too, but I'd need to drive them back to back. It just feels like a more grippy package though, it really does. It just feels like it, it wants to grip forever and ever. And you can just chase the throttle and it goes. I don't know how much faster you need your track bias 911 to be, because it's full on. Anyhow, if we turn everything off, we see what happens when the chassis geniuses and their electronics are put behind a bit. Anyhow, what happens here? So we back it in a bit. Yes. Um, and you can see, it's a bit of a riot. It's got so much balance, this thing, that you can just pull a paddle and back it in and, and do all kinds of, frankly, outrageous things with it. I don't think I've driven a 911 that feels better on a trailing throttle. It's just delicious. by doing big, big angles. But the other thing is you can choose smaller angles. You can just balance the car with, look at that, just smaller angles, smaller angles. It's lovely, so delicious. And of course, you've always got little traction. Just, if you want to, just floor it and it bing goes. A special mention has to go to a Mr. Holger Bartels and his chassis guys for the electronics and the calibration, because if you're not someone that wants to go sideways everywhere, you can leave this thing with the systems on and it just lets you play with it so that it doesn't interfere. And the brakes, every time I hit the brakes, Neil, his body kind of hits the dashboard. You can't see him, but on the track, it feels like at least 10% more performance than a standard GT3. It really does. Wow. I admit, I prefer my fast, light 911s with a manual gearbox, but the new RS is a stunning package. For the money, nothing comes close to matching its speed or the fun it dishes out. The want is strong with this one, especially in purple. <laughs> 